Hello and welcome to another episode of Gizmo, the show that tackles all the technology that you want to know about. My name is Rosie Keane. And I'm James Page. In response to our interest in the film episode last week, we're going to be looking at a collection of self-shooting cameras and comparing them with the help of our guest, Doug, who is a leading photographer based in Bournemouth. He'll be giving his opinions and advice on all the cameras that we've selected to tell us about his shoots and his own material. But first, let's have a look at today's poll. Yes, this week's poll we're having a look at three cameras on the consumer market. The Panasonic HD Handycam TM40, the iPhone 5S and a Canon 550D. What we want to know from you at home is which is the best value. Not in one particular aspect, but the product as a whole. And what is the best value for your hard-earned cash? Give us a tweet with your comments using the hashtag GizmoPoll, followed by the A for the Panasonic, B for the iPhone or C for the Canon. We'll add up all the votes and announce it at the end of the show. Should be an interesting result. Should be. Um, and to make your decision, our top testers, Freddie and Stephen, gave each of the cameras a test run, rating them in terms of price, picture quality and practicality of each camera. So let's see what they got up to and what their verdict is. Hi, I'm Freddie, and I'll be your guide through everything that beeps and boops here to show you what to and what not to buy. There are so many different cameras on the market today, so I've chosen three different gizmos to be put through their paces. Introducing the Canon 550D, the iPhone 5, and the Panasonic HD Handycam TM40. Apart from the picture and video taking qualities, I'll also be examining their general specification and overall ease of use. Firstly, we have the Canon 550D an entry-level DSLR with an impressive 18 MP. Secondly, the iPhone 5S. Excluding the fact that the device is also a phone music player and much more, it does have a fantastic camera with a large screen and image stabilization, as well as a list of other features. And then we have the Panasonic HD Handycam TM40. The cheapest of our three, this camera should not be undervalued with both internal and external memory features, plus a high optical zoom of 16.8. But will it be able to compete with our other high-priced giants? And now we come to our subject, and with the budget here on Gizmo, we've gone all out, and our cameras will be lucky enough to film our very own Mini Cooper. Remote control car. This 1 to 9 scale replica model of the British classic Mini Cooper. With fully functioning radio control, the Cooper has left to right steering and forwards and reverse capabilities. The light plastic body sits on the pure power of 8 AA batteries. And controlling this beast of a machine is uh, Steve over here. That's enough simmer down. With intros out of the way, it's time to start our engines, belt up and uh, see what these users can do. First off, it's the Canon 550D. It's got high shutter speed, so you can keep up to pace with the car, but the audio isn't, isn't the best you can get. It's very easy to use with uh, simple settings, but you get a uh, plasticky feeling underneath your fingertips. I'm trying to get a good pull focus here with uh, old Steve over there. That's the Canon. Now let's look at the iPhone 5S. <laughs> um, so many more options with the new iPhone 5S. Uh, you can video in slow motion, which is a lot. Uh, what I'm worried about is it gets quite fiddly to hold and I'm worried about dropping it, especially when it's cold like this. Uh, loads of options on here. We've got slow motion video, uh, normal video photos, square for those Instagram lovers out there, and uh, panoramic. Yep, Steve, what do you want? Hello there, Freddy. Yep. Um, so that was the iPhone 5S. Next, we have the last of our cameras, the Panasonic HD Handycam TM40. Let's take a look. It's got quite a handy self-shooting mode on this. Uh, just flip, flip the screen around and uh, 
you can see everything that you're doing. Also zoom in, um, yet yeah, quite a shaky image. It's a uh, 16.8 times optical zoom, um, but the autofocus is all over the place when you do this. You get blurs everywhere. And with the testing out of the way, it's time to look at the scores. So the Panasonic Handycam, with its simplicity, didn't really rev any engines. As good as it feels, it was really lacking in features like aperture capability and sound. Three out of five stars. The Canon is a close second place for this nice shot and a range of lenses. However, the Canon was let down by audio and the slow focusing, leaving it with an empty tank on four out of five stars. First place taking home the gold is the iPhone 5S. By all means not perfect, but with its easy shooting and size, it is a good choice for filming, regardless of it being a device with so many features. 4.5 out of 5 stars. So first party checkered flag was the, the old iPhone 5S. Um, I'm going to have to leave you now. Uh, that's my ride back to the studio. All right. Well, that was some interesting stuff there from Freddie, Stephen, and the Panasonic Handycam, iPhone 5S, and Canon 550D. So we're joined with Doug. Doug, what do you make of these cameras and the guy's verdict? Yeah, well, these cameras, I think they're a good selection of cameras because there's uh, one from each different like, uh, background. You've got for a phone, uh, mm -hmm. DSLR, and a little Handycam. And I think that their verdict was good. I think the 5S is great for just like, it's very easy and simple for yeah. you people to use mm. um, from any background. Any, anyone can just grab it and take a picture. It's, it's, it's good. And uh, have you used any of these before yourself? Yeah, I shoot on the Canon, the 550D actually, which is that exact camera. And um, I love it, I think it's great. It's got a nice big sensor, which, which is uh, 80 megapixels, which allows you to get great image quality. And of course, it has. Um, you can change lenses in it, so you can get a great selection of lenses for it as well. That's good. Awesome. So, like, yeah. like what features about the Canon? It's all the lenses and stuff you like. The added things you yeah. can do yourself to sort of customize it almost. Yeah, exactly. You can really dial in the look you want. Whereas the iPhone is a bit trickier oh, and the hand. Fantastic. Well. So, That's brilliant. if you had to choose Panasonic or iPhone quickly. iPhone. Um, well, thanks for your expert opinion there, Doug. Um, and we're now going to look at some of the cameras. We're going to have a closer look at the DSLR for some of, and some of the software your mobile phone can do um, controlling the camera as an alternative from using the laptop or the tablet. The app is called the DSLR Dashboard, and we're going to be controlling it with the Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini. So to connect your Android or tablet to the camera, you need a micro USB to USB cable, which generally costs around £5 and are easy to get a hold of, even from eBay. And once you've downloaded the app, plugged in the camera, there's no installation needed, and you can control your DSLR straight away. So what do you make of it? I think it's very good, to be honest. Um, I've seen similar things to this before, um, but this one's very good. You've got a wide range of features mm -hmm. you can control all the functions you'd need on the camera. And it's also got some bonus features as well, I know. It's got uh, histograms and waveforms and things oh, like that, um, which I think which is great, because I, uh, I know some cameras don't have those. So, um, so not just another great. useless gizmo. Yeah. It's actually no, yeah, good. it's useful. Yeah, very useful. Yeah, definitely. Oh, awesome. Well, take pictures yeah, pictures. no, I mean, it's so good. You can take pictures, which then focuses the DSLR and then takes a picture, um, you can change the focus of the actual camera itself, the DS DSLR, and it recognises faces, so which is really good for the camera because it just makes it quicker and more accurate. Um, so I, I personally absolutely love this app. Um, Fantastic. You, would you think it's, it's better just to use it manually or...? I think, if, I think it's varied. I think um, most of the time I probably would use it manually, but I'm mm. sure there will be a time when the app will come in very, very useful. Um, oh, right. So I'd probably give it a download, yeah, oh, definitely. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice, easy to use app. Anyone can pick it up, like yeah. the 5S, you know, it's accessible yeah, for everyone. Yeah, exactly, yeah. OK, well, that was the DSLR dashboard. The next app we're going to have a look at is the time-lapse app, because, well, another brilliant app, really. One of the problems we often face as filmmakers is indeed the time-lapse, but this piece of kit makes it a little more interesting. Here's the time-lapse turntable, which costs around £20 and can rotate to give you a 360-degree angle. This is one of 
the ones we did in the studio last week, and over an hour of footage gave us around 30 seconds of video. Have a look. Now, the good thing about this little gizmo is that it's compatible with any time-lapse app on the smartphone, but today we're using the time-lapse original, which is only about £1.99 on an iPad, which is really easy to use. All you need to do is select a time that you want to record and then how long you want the final video to be, and away it goes. So good. So, uh, so Doug, what are your opinions on this? Do you like it? Uh, yeah, I haven't actually used that before, but uh, I know um, some time-lapse setups are very, quite, can be quite complicated, mm. but I think that's a really good idea. It's all in one. It uh, seems very easy to use once yeah. you programmed it. Um, I think anyone could use it. I think it's Which features good. do you like about it then? Uh, I just think that it's just so simple and the fact mm. that it's quite cheap. So, 19 99 Yeah, well, mm. 20 quid. 20 so, quid. You'd, yeah, yeah. you'd definitely pick one up for £20, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Then, um, Again, it just makes it the time that's so much more accessible yeah. for everyone. I think it just makes it more enjoyable for the everyday user as well. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to be a professional filmmaker. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's Good. kind of opening the doors to everyone else to have a go. Exactly. So you would, you, you like it? Yeah, I'll definitely give it, I might oh. give it a buy. Uh, Fant <laughs> fantastic, soon, not just yeah. a gimmick then. No, no. Brilliant. <laughs> See, I think I would actually like to get it. It's a great novelty, especially for home videos and families, because you can plug it into any smartphone. But I would have to say it's probably a fun thing to play with, not something which filmmakers would start to invest in. Wouldn't you agree, Rosie? Yeah, I'd yeah. say so. Yeah. Put that one back there. Well, after all that info, we're coming to the end of our show, and it's time to have a look at some of the most recent technology news this week and the results of today's poll. Let's see what you guys said about those phones. Yes, um, let's have a look at the, what's headlining in the techno world. First on the list is spamming. We thought we had heard it all from scammers and spammers, but in the new, there is a new email circulating the UK, ransom spamming. Users receive emails with malware attachments which encrypt the files on their computer before demanding several hundred pounds to decrypt them. This is in fact a lie, and even when you pay the money, you will not get your files back. Luckily, this has been mainly targeting small business owners, but this doesn't mean everyone else is safe. So watch out for this one. Next up is the long-awaited release of the PlayStation 4. It was finally released in North America three days ago, and Sony has claimed to have sold one million consoles within this time, despite mixed reviews and technical issues. According to comments on Amazon and Twitter, affected machines, audio and video faults, while others power down randomly. The problem has already been nicknamed the Blue Light of Death, a reference to Red Ring of Death, a series of overheating problems affected the Xbox 360 console. As the PS4 is due to be released in Europe over the next fortnight, Sony has begun the, begun the console war against Microsoft Xbox One and within Christmas coming up soon. Finally, we have crowned funded Rubicon 3D printer, which is capable of turning real life objects into 3D models a process which is, would normally cost around £1,000. The Kickstarter project has produced a machine which costs £200. Despite its small size, it's capable of scanning objects up to 16 centimetres wide and 25 centimetres high. 3D printing has been dubbed the next big thing of the experts. Thanks, Rosie. Finally, after tallying all your votes, it can be revealed that the camera you guys think is the best value for money is the iPhone 5S. Looks like you agree with our testing team, with one comment from Banana123 saying, the fact I could get decent footage on it and use it as a normal phone, it's a winner for me. Looks like it's got all the features that gives the iPhone the edge on this one. So that's all we have time for today. A big thank you to Doug for joining us and a big thank you at home for joining us as well. We'll see you next week when we'll be looking at the brand new Adobe Creative Suite. Sounds good. See you then. Bye. Bye.